What's going on, guys? Welcome on in an interesting week where we did have the S&P trend up, hit all-time highs on Thursday, not on Friday, but it hit all-time highs again this week, which is like another week, another all-time high is kind of how it feels. Yet it just, if you're, if you've been watching the markets and you've been watching a lot of individual stocks, um, you may kind of have felt like, hey, we are in all-time highs. It doesn't necessarily give off the vibe. Uh, I would say that this past week, you know, we are at all time highs on the S and P 500, um, which makes for an interesting discussion, I think, and it makes it uh, makes it fun because uh, maybe it's not fun because you're losing money potentially, uh, but also at the same time, this is what makes the market the market. So at the end of the day, um, it's cool and it's a opportunity to learn from price action. So. What I'm kind of getting at is like, you see how we had this breakout of all-time highs? This is how, this happened mid to late September, pretty much right in here. Like we did push above that and we are currently above that. But from that point, the S&P is up about 1% from where it is, right? From that breakout point, it's up 1%. And to the all-time high that we have, it's up 1.67 that was made on Thursday. So not, you can definitely say um, not the biggest momentum thrust. <laughs> Uh, you know, into all time highs where, you know, sometimes you see all time high breakouts and we get big moves. And in the last one, I think was pretty substantial. If you kind of go back into this time frame, we uh, broke this level and we had a nice move. We had a nice move to all time highs, you know, a couple of days in a row. We had a nice, you know, two and a half percent push. Boom. Not that a 1.6 percent push isn't, you know, much. I mean, not, it's, not, it's not nothing, but it's like, eh, OK, cool. The other story, though, is not just the S&P, because if you look around, it, you know, it, it's it's like, OK, that's what the S&P might look like. But what about the, the Nasdaq could be even stronger? The Russell's really strong. Well, yeah, you know, um, you, you don't really get that either. Uh, <laughs> we did fill the gap on the on the queues. So QQQ broke to not an all time high, but it filled this gap. So cool. But trending up, you know, so it's doing its thing. Just not really giving us follow through we're getting gap ups and then sell offs gap up and sell off has kind of been the situation uh the dow on the other hand did have a look for a potential breakout to all-time highs and it did do it on friday it's just huh you know you look at that chart and you go oh well, that's cool uh massive upper wick which is not the most impressive or the strongest look you know, for a push to all time highs, right? You'd like to see us close at, you know, near the top of that candle, and whether that is this big or not, who cares? We're just closing strong. And it didn't close too strong. You know, here's the Dow's five minute and very strong first half of the day, first, you know, morning part of the day. If, look, if we're talking Eastern time, and then just completely gave it all back by the end. Now, it still finishes up from the day before. So, cool, great. You know, because it closed right in here on Thursday, and we, we close here. So we closed up. Yes, great, but not the most exciting close. And the Russell, sort of a similar situation. Big move early and then gave it all back. It did have a pretty big gap up. Let me go back to the daily time frame here. But, you know, trying to break out of this trend to the downside, but uh, struggling. So I think the word to summarize this week was kind of a struggle. And, you know, some things did well, some things didn't. I think it, it, we'll, we'll look at a couple of charts here in, in a minute, and, and you'll kind of get a good sense of that. So I think that, that that's kind of the, the word, right? Struggle to push higher. But at the same time, when we say struggle to push higher, it's not bad. Like, it's not, oh, my gosh, free fall, you know? So it's definitely not that, but it's de it, we're in between. We're, we're not high momentum up. We're not high momentum down. We're not sell-off, panic sell. We're not short squeeze. We're not. We're not really. We're not really any of those right now. We're kind of in between. Uh, and I know a lot of traders, um, at least specifically, who are pretty frustrated with this week's price action. But what I would encourage you to do is, is zoom out and look at the bigger picture. And I think that's that's the biggest takeaway. When you look at the bigger picture, you know the overall trends are generally up and they're intact to the upside. So I don't think that that ruins the bullish thesis for some of these individual stocks and, and the individual trends you might be seeing out there. It's just, you know, maybe not the most promising of weeks, but it's kind of the, been the deal. And like I talked about in the last video, this is historically, you know, one of the weakest times of the year, like going back the past 30, 40, 50 years. Like this is, this is it. Like, you know, the past five years, we've had like red September's almost every time. So um, our, you know, you, you can take it and say, man, this has been terrible price action. Or you can say, 
well, it's actually pretty interesting because we, we actually are up, relatively speaking, compared to the past like four or five Septembers where we tend to be pretty weak. So, you know, take it how you want to see. Uh, it, it just depends upon the lens you're looking at it from. So 10 year wise, we talked about in the last video, the correlation to oil and how oil is ten, tends to lead the 10 year and the 10 year is We'll see here. I'm curious if this is going to be, if this area that we're putting in right now is going to be kind of a lower high and, and play inside of uh, the bigger picture trend that we have drawn in and maybe make a new trend to the downside. We'll see. This could be, I'd give it another day or two here to really confirm, but this could be the third touch to the trend line, which would make it, in my view, uh, more of a valid trend line. Obviously, a, a two touch trend line is like, okay, you, know, you, can, you can you can make that out of anything. Three is okay, cool. Three, we've got three touches to it. It makes sense. It makes a little more, uh, gives it a little more validity in, in my eyes. And I think others' eyes as well. So that's the deal on that. Nothing insane to talk about there. The dollar, which I don't think we talked about much last video, but we will talk about it now. Right inside its its zone of interest, putting pressure on those lows, and then think that will give us a nice uh, you know segue into gold and silver and even Bitcoin too. We'll talk about that too. Um, so <clears throat> this is interesting. I mean, I wouldn't. It's it's weak. I, I'm not gonna say, oh my gosh, it must bounce. I mean, historically speaking, right, the past two years now or so, it's bounced nicely here. But this time, it's a little. I don't want to say a little different, but. You know, we had a little bit of a period like that in here, and then we had a nice recovery. This is just like a little weaker, it seems like. You know, it's a, a little bit of a weaker look. So I'm very curious to see what happens here. And, you know, when you dive deeper into gold and silver and all that, I think you can kind of start to get a sense, okay, you know, maybe, you know, we do get the dollar breakdown given gold's done very, very well. Either way, gold's been pretty nice. It had a nice pullback on Friday. I don't think there's much to talk about there. To be honest with you, it's just trending up in breakout mode, big picture. Um, had a nice little pullback to finish off the day or to kind of, you know, lead us into the weekend. But in the grand scheme, that pullback is fair. And we've had nice pullbacks, you know, along the way inside of the bigger picture move to the upside, right? So nothing out of the ordinary from a, you know, market pullback perspective, I don't think, at least on that. Um, silver, very, in I think a little more interesting here. Silver, a little more interesting. Maybe there's someone who played this and traded this and depends upon how you view things in the market and all that stuff. But let's zoom it out. Let's go to the daily time frames. And this was the prior high of, well, I should say the high from 2020 and 2021 that we have marked with this blue line. So I guess we can get rid of that now. And then I marked the top blue line here as the high of this year. And then I marked another blue line right there, which was kind of the top of a consolidation area that seemingly has been pretty nice. You know, we were breaking to the downside of that consolidation. You had an upper wick take you through that and then whoop, right to the downside. You could even make the argument that you kind of have a head and shoulders pattern with these wicks. I mean, you know, you can, I don't want to say you're grasping at straws. I mean, you can see a lot of different things the way it depends on how you view the charts. This is not surprising to me. You have a push to a new high of the year followed by a hard sell-off. I mean, it's not surprising when you approach large areas of potential resistance or, or big key areas. I, I got this year's high that, that's held for, you know, a, a while now. You know, that's kind of a, a spot of like, whoa, if it breaks to the upside, people might say, we might have a big breakout trade. And then that could offer the opportunity to play the, the reverse and capture um, some traders, the breakout traders, in the wrong position and then we have a sell-off and that's kind of what seemingly has happened initially so i'm curious to see what happens in the next week because so far right now this kind of has the look of false breakout we might want to pull back but we did just get a nice little pullback off the false breakout from 3270s and we came down to all the way down to 3130s so you know that, that already kind of gave you a nice pullback the question is how big I still think as long as you kind of fit in inside of the bigger trend here with these higher lows, I think it still looks good. So that's kind of all I would say. I, and I wouldn't want to see it dropping below 31 by much, holding this volume node on silver. And yeah, that would be a good, if it holds that area, that would kind of make sense. Okay, higher lows being put in, you know, still intact to the upside. If we start to break down below that, I think you might have to start asking the question of, okay, do we have more downside here to be talking about? Are we looking for maybe a move down into the upper 20s? And then what is the dollar looking like? Does that support the thesis? And then we can kind of talk about both sides of that. Either way, interesting action, uh, but overall, big picture, pretty strong. 
okay? Bitcoin, on the other hand, um, big picture, it's trying to break out of its consolidation, not doing so with, you know, immense momentum. Uh, that's, that's kind of been the, the, the theme of the week, right? Um, volume has been slowly, seemingly coming down on average the past couple of, well, really not the past couple of days, the past month or so on Bitcoin in general. I don't want to, I don't put too much weight into that because in my opinion, or in my view, we are still within, I guess I should get rid of this double line. We're still within the consolidation band or zone, um, the channel, whatever you want to call it. We're still within this general channel and consolidation. And honestly, until we break to the North and I would want to see it break above 60, 68, 69 K, which would be above this volume node. Uh, I, then I would get interested, but we're getting close. We're very close. We're a couple thousand dollars away from that. So we could get that at some point on Bitcoin until that occurs, you know, eh, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if she rolls back over just, we're not in a high momentum environment. Can Bitcoin change it? Yeah, sure. It could. We'll see if it can. We will see. Uh, okay. So let's get to some chart requests again. Like always, you can leave any chart requests down below. And we'll cover them. Uh, platform we're using, by the way, is TradingView, if you are not familiar, which many of you are probably familiar. But if you're not, or you're on a free version, you want to upgrade, there's a link to get $15 off when you upgrade, if you do, in the video description box down below. IIPR, here is the first request. I like this chart. I'm actually going to drop an alert on that because I don't know. I'll take a peek at how this one looks next week. Crossing up, if it can cross above that, you potentially a breakout candidate if you jump out in the bigger time frames. What do we have? Okay, weekly time frame. Uh, we have a little bit of a resistance level right here. Would be kind of something to think about. That's back from 2019. How much are we really gonna care about that? I don't know, not too much in my opinion. Uh, I like, there's room up to about one the low to mid 150s. That's the next little volume node, but in the bigger picture, not that big. This is the bigger one, up near 190. There is room, I, th I think, to fill through a lot of this empty space, meaning we had a quick move down and not a lot of orders filled through there. I wouldn't be surprised if we were to push back through that area on the breakout potential on this, this stock. So interesting one. Keep it on your radar if you're looking for a breakout play. Um, it is a REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. You would think that, I, I think I remember, I maybe, maybe at one point, held this in my portfolio. I want to say, I don't even know. I've got to go back. It's a long time ago. This is a very familiar ticker to me. Um, but this either way, with rates coming down, REITs have been doing very, very well. So you are looking at a stock in a sector that has been doing very, very well, clearly uptrending, recovering nicely, that has potentially some room to the upside. So I like that look. Ideally, you know, if, if it uh, were to pull back, there's some little gaps to fill here. I would want to see it for right now. If it's going to show strength, hold above 132, 133, this little consolidation zone, and then break to the upside. If not, I think there's maybe a room, a more some room back into the mid to potentially lower 120s. We got some volume there that would kind of put us back into like the upper part of this area if we were to back test. I think a big part of that will be the 10 year. If the 10 year keeps coming down slowly but surely, this probably will inch up higher and higher. Real estate's doing pretty well right now. Um, with uh, the tenure gliding lower. Y-O-U, clear secure. All right, we can we have we have a lot of lines here. So let me get rid of some of these. Let's zoom out big picture and let's get rid of some of these. Okay, so this one we can get rid of. This one we can get rid of. This one is kind of irrelevant now, but just looking back, right, we had looked at it in the past, I believe. It had broken out, not a high momentum breakout, Came back a little bit of a retest, maybe a little bit more of a retest than you would have loved, and but it did, it held it pretty good, and then bounced and had a nice move. When you're looking at, I don't want to say illiquid stocks, I don't know if this is an illiquid stock, that's the best way to classify it, but it's not a super high trading volume tech stock, you know. So, like this high volume day back here around the earnings in October, or sorry, August, uh, 6.5 million today's trading volume or so, 1.5. 2 million. So, you know, good amount of shares, but that's not like, you know, compared to like an Apple or something, it's nothing uh, in the grand scheme. So just, you know, as long as you're aware of that, you know, these, the movements maybe tend to be a little choppier or not as clean. That's why I like looking at the bigger picture, which in this case, this is a nice bigger picture chart. Uh, above the 33 $34 area looks pretty promising. The issue that you're going to have is this is going to be right up into an area of resistance. But 
at the same time, we are potentially breaking to the north over this volume node or zone, I guess. So the potential for that breakout above 34, I think is really good because then you can then you get into the cat like into the ball game of like, oh, we might have room to like 37s. Get back up into here. Like there's a lot of empty space up here. So I like that one if it can get going um to the north there. But there that band, that white band is kind of the upper resistance where it's gotten up to that level before in the past and then it's pulled back. So something to keep keep in keep in mind, be aware of that. CCL, this one is a fun one. I think I've been watching this one in the back burner a little bit. Um Carnival Cruise. I think I saw some No, you know what I saw? Not Carnival. It was um not cruise ships. Airlines, very strong week. Let me just jump to that really quick before we get into to Carnival Cruise. Airlines, very strong week. Here's Jets, the global Jets ETF. A lot of the big airline names are underneath this ETF or, or owned in this ETF. So very nice move there on this. If you jump over to like United Airlines, uh, UAL, look at that massive move this week. If you look at Love, Southwest Airlines, a little choppier, had a big, pu big push, big push, <laughs> big push up and then came back down. Uh, what else? JetBlue Airways. This one has been pretty weak, relatively speaking, but it's now coming back and had a pretty good week this week. Um, so you're getting some nice push. I guess American Airlines is a good one to, to look at as well. Uh, pretty strong move there. Um, Delta, DAL. Just so you're, you know, where, nice move there. Pretty, pretty good week in the airlines space. Does that correlate to uh, Carnival Cruise? Not necessarily, but, you know, travel in general, like, it seemingly is doing okay. Uh, I don't know about the hotels, but I, I know that tr that airlines were doing well. This, I like, this is a good chart. I prefer to look at this on the weekly time frame because of how it, it seems to be moving. Above 1980, that's the spot that I have charted out. Personally, for me, I don't know if I'll be very interested in, in, in trading this one to the upside, just personally for me, but you do have pretty solid uh, trend to the upside, just a rough, you know, let's mark that off roughly. This is kind of how I would view it. If we break this to the upside, good looks. I think there's good bets. However, if we false break that and approach the trend line, that trend line goes, that's a no-go. That's a false breakout in my book. So it might take a bit to kind of establish that because we've seen, you know, charts go boom and then come back, hold a level and then go for, for more. So a little bit of it, just it's not ready at this point and then it comes back. So I'm watching that one closely. It's having, you know, continuously... You know, putting some pressure on the north side of that resistance. So we'll watch that one. I'm very interested. And uh, above 1975 really is the spot for uh, you to get into breakout mode. The only thing is that like per personally to me, you know, on a breakout stock, I would like to see, you know, like not this, you know what I mean? leading up to that like there's a lot of downtrend you know before that and stuff like i would want to see a stock like the, like the other two we just mentioned like you and iipr um looked a little bit better from like they had a little bit more of a when you zoom out better uptrend like let's go back to that one iipr like yes it's it had this i guess no now that i think about it you know it's it's also it's similar it's actually similar looking back and then while you just to remind myself how that chart looked. Yeah, I mean, they're all kind of similar. They all, are, all are, are kind of similar. Now, the idea behind that is like, if you get, like, if we keep seeing rotation in, in a strong market, these are probably good plays. They're kind of rotation plays. And we're kind of rotating back into them because we were in tech and stuff for so long in tech maybe. Now that tech's doing bad, but maybe get some rotation into some of these guys. Bigger, bigger picture. We're talking like, you know, weeks and months. Uh, as you look at the bigger time frames, when we start seeing some rotation there, as long as we're in a bull market, so I think as long as the markets are overall trending higher and we're getting rotation through the markets, these are these are good good plays above those levels. I think it's just a matter of will we get the follow through behind them, and um, you know how long does that last to give you the thrust that maybe you're looking for. So we'll see, we will see. Uh, I should also mention really quick that Nvidia, by the way, because it's you know it's a popular name, uh, Nvidia pretty much perfectly i can get rid of this bottom line here uh, came up to that trend line that we were talking about and rejected is that super surprising not really given given how the week has gone uh choppier week not not as a choppy week but a choppy but also like not just just not, not a high momentum week is a better way to put it in my view so came up to that spot boom key 
above 128 and then really above 130s in my opinion is going to be like okay boom nvidia is off to the races if it breaks 130 then it gets very interesting so i'm it's on high alert, high alert for me next week I, I don't think i would trade the breakout of a downtrend like this but that's just personally my strategy my style but you know if we can get up into the 130 area give us a consolidation you know either way i think it looks bullish and could offer opportunities to the upside so we'll be watching that one uh kind of closely uh, leave any chart requests, please, in the comment section below. If you're looking for a new broker, I got Interactive Brokers linked up for you down there. Best in the game if you're looking for a new one, especially if you're over, if you are not in the U.S. Uh, I mean, like, what are you doing? Interactive is is probably one of the best ways to go. Other than that, we have other links and resources if you're interested. And I will see you guys in the next video next week. Peace. Enjoy your weekend.